this demonstration shows how to draw the pattern for an octahedron. An octahedron is kind of the equivalent of having two pyramids attached to each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how that pattern or how the form looks before it's drawn into a pattern. But I'm going to be using a compass, a pencil, and a straight edge, and of course a rule, a, an eraser too. So this is a ruler, but it could just as easily be a straight edge because I'm not going to rely on any numbers. All right, so the first thing I'm going to sketch is a shape of an octahedron from a 3D sort of view. So I'm going to draw a uh, square, kind of lightly at first because I have to figure out visually how to draw this. So I'm going to create a pyramid shape like that. And then there's a pyramid that comes from the bottom of it too. Now the angle of drawing one of these things is difficult sometimes, so I'm going to try drawing it from another, a different angle. So I'm going to try drawing it from a little more sloped. So there's one triangle, followed by a second triangle, a third triangle, and a little bit more, the fourth, and then another triangle here, another triangle there. So we've got side A, B, C, and then D, and then underneath is E, F, G, H. A side view of this would be straight across. There'd be a triangle there and a triangle there. This is the bottom half, or in your view, the top half. If I skewed it slightly to the side or drew it at a more extreme angle, it might be something like this. I'm trying to even get more extreme. behind there and so that forms it as well all right so what I ultimately need are a total of eight triangles to make up this pattern and thinking of it as two pyramids you have pyramid a and then pyramid B so we have thinking about it that goes upside down that leads to it they are attached to each other. There's no bottoms to either one, so there's no reason to draw a square at all, just triangles. So if, um, if you were drawing a pyramid pattern, what you'd be doing is having a square followed by four triangles like this. But since the square is not present in this, and there is, in fact, four other triangles, what you're really going to do is draw this shape twice facing each other. And there's several ways to do that, so I'm going to draw it out a couple different ways over in this area, and then I will draw an actual pattern for it over here. So one way to draw it is to create your equilateral triangles like this for the top half of this octahedron, and then a duplicate of it, a mirror of it really, like that. And um, the way that everything connects together is that this connects here to form the peak of the pyramid there. This connects together for the bottom pyramid, and then these sides connect together, those connect together, leaving finally this one having to connect there. Okay, but you can evolve the pattern any way you want. You could move this one over to here, and this one over to here, and then what that would look like is something like this. So I'd start with that triangle, and the one below it, then uh, the one next to it, the one above it, and then one more off like this, and then the one down below, you've got uh, one, it could be a mirror of this, so I could draw one off to this side, one off of there, and finally one more like that. So sort of that shape. And you can also draw it in many other ways. So for example, I could mirror these instead of having, or this mirror, rather mirror, make a rotational uh, relationship between them. So I'm gonna draw the top half draw those, put that triangle there. Now the bottom half would be, if it was a rotational pattern, you'd have one coming off this way, one coming off that way, and then the last one there. And you can see that if I were to flip this around or take that un this half across the line, bring it up to the top half, this would be a rotational duplication of the pattern. This one is a mirroring 
pattern, and this one is also a mirroring pattern. But all of these work, and you can use any pattern development you wish in order to get the, the form you want, as long as you are remembering where everything connects. So if I do that here, that connects here. This one connects here. Those are the easy ones to always start with because you know they close up to form these peaks. That connects there. This one connects here, and it leaves the remainder like that. On this one, same kind of thing applies. This connects here. This one connects here. That one connects there, which makes this one have to connect here, and finally that one connects to there. All right, so now I'm going to draw the pattern out, and all you need to do is start with a straight line. And that straight line, the easiest way to do it is in the center point. So I'm going to draw a line there. It doesn't have to be very long. It has to be as long as the triangle side. And then I'm going to make a triangle here and here. And so I have to account for a total of one, two, three, four triangles in this space and and only like one and a half or two total triangle widths in this because you got half of one here half there and a whole one there so that's a total of two so let's say my uh, i drew the line in the middle here i'd make sure that my triangles don't go too large to fit on here so my first step is to guess where the center of this is and i'm just gonna draw a freehand guess line like that and i'm gonna put a point here saying this is the edge of the triangle. And then I'm going to set my compass to whatever I want to do for that triangle. And I want to make sure that I can fit two rows up there and two down here, and I think this is big enough. So my first step is to create the length of line for the triangle, and then to mark off, just like I would for making a pyramid, the cross right here, which is the radius for a circle. It also is the first triangle. But since I'm mirroring it or drawing it down below as well, I'm going to also cross that one. And I've got two triangles. This is for top, this is for bottom. Now the compass can be set on that crosshair and the circle can be drawn all the way around like that. And I already know everything fits because the circle fits. Same thing applies down here. Get that centered nicely draw your circle around like that. Now, now that I've done that, I'm literally capable of drawing any one of these patterns within these circles. So um, I'm going to do the top one, do it just like this. So I have something to start with and a reference to go by. I'm almost finished. I have to do the same thing down below. So I'm going to set the compass here, over here. Finally, here. Now, use my straight edge to connect everything up. Just like on any time you're doing equilateral triangles that are in a group like this, they go through the center. That's a way of making your stuff a little more accurate by just, you know, knowing that that's going to be the case, and so you check to make sure it does. And if it isn't, you need to correct something. Now, notice that this line normally would just end there if I was drawing a pyramid, but it would continue on to here. So I'm going to draw all of that at once. Like that. In fact, I could have drawn this one all at once. All the way up to here. OK, so I've got one, two, three, four. And I'm starting to get them drawn here. Cross all the way across that. All the way across this way. So in essence, an octahedron is actually easier to draw than a uh, pyramid even, because you don't have to do, you don't have to make a square. So I've got to connect across here. This one goes all the way from there. That's one of the things to look for, is where can you find the pattern uh, connecting through, making straight lines that helps you build that. That one could have gone all the way across there, in fact. So if you, if you had uh, been making these for a while and you understood what you're doing, it would take you very little time to, to drop all the lines by just following through with everything. Okay, so I think I've got them all. Yep, there's that, like this. It's kind of a bat wing kind of thing. 
I can take the eraser and remove extraneous lines. So let me just look at that pattern cleanly. much easier to understand when it's like that. Okay, so now I have to do tabs. Now, from looking over here and remembering what I'm doing, I know that these two have to connect together. That connects to here, that connects to there, that connects, and finally that one connects down here. So I need one tab per. So, randomly, I'm choosing this one. That's a tab. Tab there. And I'll start arrowing things so that we can do a process of elimination, which is not that important in this particular design or this particular shape, but it is when you get complex stuff going. You want to start eliminating the possibilities of what you need to choose or where things connect by doing what I'm doing here, finding where they go. And it can go here or here, it doesn't matter, but I'll put it there. and that is a complete octahedron pattern. What I would do to assemble this is most likely I would attach this to here and it would make the pyramidal pattern. And then I would attach this one to here and make the other pyramidal pattern and then you could assemble the shells together. In which case it might actually make sense, let's examine this for a second, to take that off and move it to here. Mm. But it may not, too, because it's not like a square coming down on top of it where you lay it flat. You have to tuck these into each other, so it may not make a difference. But there it goes. That is a octahedron pattern.